<laughs> Good evening and welcome. Uh, tonight we're here to uh, hear public input if people wish to speak about our space needs. We're going to vote on whether eighth grade or kindergarten will go to the high school next year. And we're going to vote on which group of options, B or C, we should focus on for our future space needs and considerations. Uh, I'd like to say before we actually begin that I realize that we have no ideal or perfect solutions to our space problem. But in spite of that, I have to say I feel really good about this meeting tonight. Um, and the reason I feel really good is because a healthy process is taking place. People are talking to each other in reasonable and appropriate ways. People are planning together and helping each other with this tough problem. Nothing is being done in a haphazard way, and people's concerns are being taken very seriously. Above all else, everyone is keeping foremost in his or her mind the needs of the children. Uh, this vote tonight is the next step in the whole process. Whatever the decision, the process will be ongoing with many people involved until we have our space problems and building problems in hand. So at this time, I'd like to uh, ask Dr. Goldman if she would like to speak, and we will uh, open it up to public input. Thank you. Uh, I have not... I've chosen not to bring uh, slides which or um, uh, overhead projectors, which uh, we have already shown on, in some cases, more than one occasion, uh, so that any comments that uh, those of you who are here would like to make, you'd have plenty of time to do that. Um, I just want to point out, I agree with uh, Chairman Solon's comments, that this has certainly been a difficult process, and uh, I see it only as a phase along a longer journey to try to face understand, define, and come up with solutions for our space needs, not only space needs, but the actual condition of the buildings. Uh, I certainly thank the input of the School Space Committee, a uh, very hard-working group, worked for practically a year in order to produce the report. I would point out to anybody that might possibly be unaware, we do have a summary report. I have a few copies here, a few more in my office. Many people have called, have either picked it up, asked us to send it to them, um, have come back with uh, excellent questions and comments so that I do feel that we are involving the community. Um, and I do think that the, um, whatever choice is made tonight, uh, I know this board, and certainly speaking as a superintendent, and I recognize also the staff, we will make whatever choice comes down the road to work. Um, I know that it isn't the best of all possible worlds, but I think it will be a very uh, acceptable solution, whatever we come up with, uh, and we will work on it together. I would suggest that perhaps those people here would like to make some comments, uh, if they have some questions, uh, want um, any specific issues. Uh, I think that the, um, the way to understand this in general broad stroke lines is that we have uh, looked at all three of our school buildings. We have divided the options into two, basically two strands, the B strand and the C strand. The B strand basically uses the, D, the grade division that we now are using or one that historically has been the uh, one used in Cape Elizabeth. That is a K4, five, a, uh, K4 primary building, a 5-8 middle school, and a 9-12 high school. I recognize that there have been some variations on that theme. Right now, for instance, we have both four and five, grades four and five, as an intermediate unit in, uh, separate from the actual Pond Cove building, but it is considered a unit administratively. We also have had a history of having a 5-8 middle school, so that there is some background for that. Um, the high school uh, has always been, or at least in recent past, uh, the 9-12 uh, configuration. Uh, all of the B options deal basically with that kind of configuration, although uh, one of the options we're looking at, the B1 modified option, does in fact ask for or suggest using space in the high school for the, K, the kindergarten. The C options, however, take another look at the grade structure and the use of this building. The C options all really add a grade to the high school structure, and in some cases two grades, either just the eighth grade or the seventh and eighth. 
Um, at one point, as we were looking at the various options, we thought maybe the building was big enough uh, and that economically that certainly would be uh, the most attractive uh, option to put both the 7th and 8th grade in here. But we're, as we worked with the architect to see if it was feasible, we realized there was no way we were going to be able to uh, separate out um, the 7th and 8th grade in a wing by themselves or even partially by themselves. We could assign them to home rooms that would be at least on a given floor grouped together, but that all the special spaces are down here, and that means that every day those students would be circulating uh, either for the um, use of uh, gym, certainly for the cafeteria, and so forth. With that in mind, we also began to realize that but looking down the road for the numbers, um, that will be here in the high school as the current bulge that is now K-7 works its way through the high school, we were going to have another oversaturated building. And in order to make space, we would have to do some major renovation inside to reconfigure space and even possibly actually add uh, a small addition. Uh, that would cost estimated cost of uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a million dollars and to spend a million dollars to expand a building that right now is not fully used seemed to fly in the face of uh, good sense. However, the building will hold one extra grade and that of course is the decision or one of the major decisions that we've been discussing as a community and I'm sure one of the things that people may want to speak to. So with that much of a simple, uh, probably oversimplified summation, um, I'd like to hand this back to you and uh, let's hear from Kappa. Are there people here tonight that would like to speak? If people would stand, for the sake of the TV, do they need to be at a microphone? Oh. If you don't mind, I'm sorry, but this is being um, taped for later broadcast. So. I'm Carla Bernstein. I currently have a daughter in kindergarten, but I do have a son who's in preschool who would be affected. And although I have not completely made up my mind, I do have some concerns about the kindergarten and the high school. Um, large in my mind is just the whole thing of being in the building that they're going to be in for a few years. Uh, it's hard enough to go to kindergarten, to make that big step, to get on a school bus, to go into such a large building compared to a small nursery school or a preschool or just your home, and to have to make a huge adjustment to a huge building and then go to a completely different building just a year later and couple the moving to a new building just a year later with a much longer school day, that's a large adjustment for little kids. Also, one of the things I like right now at Pond Cove is they get to use the cafeteria once or twice during the year to get used to that. They see some of the first and second graders in the hall, some familiar faces in the older grade. They see some of the first and second grade teachers, more familiar faces. Uh, beyond that, I understand that the building's overcrowded. I understand that it's in bad shape. But they do have a very large, well-stocked media center. They do have a separate room for art. They do have a separate room for music. They do have sinks in their rooms for in-the-room projects. They do have appropriately sized bathrooms. 
Um, and I think all of that should be taken into account. Also, the playground gets pretty crowded, and I know they're not going to have anywhere near a comparable playground at the high school. And uh, I wonder whether that's a detriment to the kids and whether it's safe to have an overcrowded and not terrific playground. If I could be convinced that they would have good enough facilities at the high school, that they would have separate space for art and music and maybe gym, that they would have the proper plumbing for younger kids, and that they would have a media center at the high school, then I might be able to be convinced. And if perhaps I could arrange to have a visit sometime during the year to Pond Cove, to the cafeteria, a tour of the building, um, then maybe, maybe I could be convinced. And I have one final comment. If the younger grades are so overcrowded, I'm wondering what happens to the middle school and the high school when all those kids move up. And I guess that's about all I have. <laughs> Anybody else wish to speak? My name is Carol Haas. I have a daughter who is currently in kindergarten. Um, I'm here to say that I really question the wisdom of moving kindergarten to the high school. My daughter's experience as she goes to school and she sees the children who are close to her age, close to her size. She's in a school that's designed for children her size. And she enjoys projecting ahead as to where she will be next year and the year after that. And I don't think it would be fair to her to put her in a building with much older children in facilities that not, are not designed for kindergartners. I also question the wisdom of just moving out the kindergartners where this problem is going to come up in a couple of years as this bulge of kids goes through the school system. And it seems to me that we have to have flexible use of our buildings and adjust them each year if necessary to accommodate the number of children that we have. And it strikes me that the logical way to do the adjusting is in the middle. When it's suitable, have the eighth grade in the high school. When it's more suitable, have the eighth grade back in the middle school. Um, I think moving the kindergarten for next year is not a good long-term solution. And if you move them next year, the money that you'll have to spend to properly accommodate them, and I do think you'd be have to accommodate them um, would not be well spent because I don't think it's a long-term solution. Who else would like to speak? Do you, do you want to address uh, some of the concerns? Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, address the issue of long-term solution. Uh, that is one of the major concerns of the school space study. Um, there are two aspects to that. One is to try to, to grasp the bulge uh, that is going through the system right now. It begins with the seventh grade. In other words, we have eight years, beginning with the seventh, including this year's K, of uh, class sizes that exceed 100. Uh, the average class size would be about 135. We have one as large as almost 160, and we have one at uh, close to 120. So we would say that each class, beginning at the seventh grade, is now um, 100 plus an average of 35. We have, there are methods that we use when we get into the architectural studies, um, and they're in the long form of the report. They're not in the short form of the report, but we do have those that plot out on a grid exactly how many students that would yield at every grade. So that is part of the, uh, the space study report, is to try to predict and almost to the year 2000 where they would be and how we would project for them. Um, in a sense, I would just suggest to you, if you think of this as a rising bulge beginning at the seventh grade, it's been pushing the facilities in the system now for eight years. This is the eighth year there has been an increase in the elementary class sizes. And of course, the impact is cumulative. 
Next year, all the grades, K-8, will be larger than the 100 that is now the average here at the high school. The four grades here in the high school are running about 100 each. Uh, and this year's eighth grade, next year's ninth grade, is the same size. After that, everything is larger. We're very interestingly watching the um, what we're getting for registrations for kindergarten, and we would really appreciate all of you here who have uh, kindergartners next year. Uh, probably you have registered, or at least let us know. But we'd appreciate it if you would remind your friends to let us know too, because our planning, uh, we already know we're going to have over 100. Um, and our experience with that is that uh, we don't get the last 10 or 15, sometimes as many as 20, but certainly the last 10 or 15 until usually the summer. Um, and so the planning for kindergarten anyway requires us to have some uh, predictability on that. Uh, as far as uh, the, the issue about um, uh, what's going to happen when this uh, bulge goes into the high school, this high school was originally sized 20 years ago for somewhere in the vicinity of 850 to 900 students. By today's standards, however, it wouldn't hold that many. We have gone through as one of the assignments to the architect in our case school space study was to realistically look at the kinds of programs we now have 20 years later, um, class sizes, class loads, and a variety of uh, programs including some special ed, some um, computerized kinds of things, and to rethink what if that uh, 800 plus is a reasonable um, number. It really isn't. We would feel more comfortable saying that this building is sized for somewhere around 750 to 800, not the 850 to even 900. Um, that exercise we've gone through, this building will accommodate that number uh, quite well. The, so I think, I'm not sure if I totally answered whatever it was, whoever made some comment about what's going to happen when that bulge coming through, uh, but the high school will hold the numbers coming through. And in fact, uh, there's still, for the, certainly for the next uh, predictable um, few years, it will also hold either the eighth grade or the kindergarten. In other words, it can make that adjustment. It will be by the time that peak enrollment gets into the high school, all four grades, that would be five grades from now, uh, if we were to still have to use it as a, uh, as a fifth grade, whether kindergarten or eighth grade in, in this building, we could do it. It would get tighter, but we could still do it. Um, the issue about why not be flexible at the eighth grade level, that is really basically what the C options look at. C options look at the uh, transformation of this building, as I sketched out very briefly, into a six-year high school um, that does require a lot of, of uh, rethinking of the way in which both the middle school currently works and the high school staffing patterns work, but we have looked at that issue. Um, we get into a, a uh, sticky problem with staffing with just the eighth grade in this building. Right now, some eighth grade classes are taught by teachers who are actually teaching parts of uh, grades six, seven, and eight. Um, conceivably, for instance, if you move the eighth grade into this building, you might have some staffing that's picked up by uh, high school teachers, might pick up one or two eighth grade classes for one reason or another. But there are a number of things that do not lend themselves well. For instance, one of the things that the middle school is trying to do right now is to uh, do some cross-level math teaching. We have some um, middle school teachers who teach eighth grade who are also teaching uh, sixth grade. Um, and we would have to really rethink how we would accomplish some of those uh, objectives. So that staffing does become a problem when you are moving eighth grade around as far as looking at that as a flexible issue. However, it has been stated in our previous meetings um, that one of the issues for eighth grade as a flux grade back and forth is not as much the academic aspect of that as it is the social aspect. Where do those kids actually belong? Um, and uh, also, I think some one of our speakers this evening has already spoken to the issue of how do you separate them out. Um, as far as the concerns that I have heard, uh, and I think they're very legitimate ones from parents of incoming kindergarten, uh, what can we do to make that wing hospitable to kindergartners and to be concerned about the safety issues? And I, I think I got the list as a uh, lady was speaking, and it is one that I have not only heard about from parents, but also from the teachers. And in fact, I myself on several occasions have been through the building with people um, 
frankly, some of the issues that people have brought up have been very helpful, issues we didn't necessarily think of um, or weren't alert to, and uh, we appreciated the, you know, the kind of conversation we've had to make sure that we're doing good planning. I should also point out that either of the moves that we're, um, the board making a choice this evening, we will be appointing an interim committee, a transition committee that will have teachers, administration, um, and school board uh, and probably parent representation on it too so that uh, we, we feel we have researched a lot of the issues but we also want to make sure that we are taking it into consideration in case there's something we've missed. Um, sinks can go into those rooms and we would definitely, uh, what we are planning on doing, um, the bathroom issue um, uh, is one where we see a space where we can, in fact, put both the girls' and the boys' bathroom in the same wing. In other words, rather than get into all the specifics unless people have some uh, questions about this, our original thinking was that we might use um, part of that wing for some high school use, and the more we looked at it, the more we thought, if we're going to do this, we have to do it right. Um, and that that means devoting it to kindergarten and making some necessary changes, including adding some bathroom fixtures so that both boys' and girls' bathrooms would be on that wing. Um, we do have enough rooms to accommodate uh, an extra room that would be used for nothing but art, music, or possibly some kind of, of uh, extra specials. There's enough uh, space in that wing for any kind of small group conferencing. There is a special ed need of one kind or another. We have looked at the issue of uh, access. There's a fire uh, code uh, issue of access for kindergarten, no more than three steps. And we have um, the uh, community services um, entrance, which is, I think, has four steps. But we understand that we can easily make that into three, bring up the, the ground level a little bit. And we're talking about adding one that is at the, uh, again, if you've been up there and can visualize what I'm saying, the um, there's a little corridor room, it's almost, I guess it's used for computers at the moment in the math wing, uh, that can become a corridor with an outside door and so there would be a second exit for kindergartners. Um, we too understand the concerns about the playground, there would have to be some ad additional equipment, I don't know exactly how much, and people have raised the issue of fencing for safety's sake so that the children running out, should somebody be running out ahead of the teacher that they wouldn't just dart out into the road. Uh, all of those are things that are manageable and the budget that I'm currently putting together we have put money into um, that budget for to cover whether it is that set of needs we have or uh, the staffing needs that we would run into if we move the eighth grade. I'm not sure I'm looking at my list to see if I covered all of the specifics that uh, were mentioned. Um, I guess so, oh I did make a, a note here, the media center um, that would be, we've had some conversation about that, and that's some, uh, uh, an unanswered issue. Um, it would seem difficult to us to actually replicate the media center. Uh, obviously, books and various kinds of services from the media center, but not necessarily a media center. Um, and we were thinking and had some preliminary conversation about um, taking the children from time to time to visit the media center, but um, that's not an issue that is absolutely pinned down at this point. Um, I think what this the summary is that um, the board, myself, we are committed to uh, making this the best educational setting we can. And as far as whether or not the, the short-term, long-term issues, uh, the long-term issue is this community absolutely has to take care of its school buildings. That's the long-term issue. The building we are sitting in is 20 years old. It is already beginning to show the kind of wear and tear that makes me very concerned about putting enough money into the budget for good five-year plan maintenance. The two buildings that we're talking about the house are K-8 facilities, and I have shown slides and, and uh, to a number of groups at this point, and I, I guess they were on TV sort of <laughs> ad infinitum. Um, that, uh, and I would be very happy to take any of you or any group in the, in the community through those buildings. They are in very bad shape. The middle school, 
uh, is we've had heating problems this week. I had uh, some concerns about lunch school heating. We've had concerns about the uh, our difficulties of curing some of our problems. We had plumbing difficulties last uh, week in the middle school. We have chronic pro plumbing problems at uh, um, at Pine Cove. Um, these are things that cannot be just tinkered with or band-aided. They absolutely do have to be fixed. We have issued a report that makes it clear, I hope, to the community that, uh, that thorough renovation is needed. And one of our plans does become a little imaginative, talks about adding on to the middle school and creating a, um, a, a building that would be designed for middle school rather than um, just renovating the old high school, but that's a decision we can talk about a little later. Uh, so the long-term issue here is absolutely getting the K-8 buildings in shape. We have um, already spent a couple of evenings talking about the 13 options that we originally came up with, but they're all variations on that B scheme or C scheme. Um, and once, uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to um, might as well do it while I'm on a roll. Uh, I have looked at the issue of state funding um, and had a representative of the state uh, office uh, come down and, and go through particularly the middle school, which I feel is the one that has the most critical needs. And uh, generally speaking, communities cannot expect to get much from the state for renovation. But because we might do some partial construction there and also because it is in such bad shape, uh, he is telling me I definitely should put in a... Uh, we should put in a, an application, and it would go in two pieces. One would be what the state calls a major project. That would be uh, the major renovation, possibly if you choose to do so, the scheme that talks about uh, an addition to the middle school and some demolition of the old, uh, the old part of the, the so-called D wing. The Pond Cove uh, state project is what they call a special project. All of the analysis of that building points to um, the lack of a proper gym. In other words, we are really giving a K-3 um, uh, gym program with a dedicated teacher and, and not really proper space. Um, and because that's an 8,000 square foot project or less, we would go through a different uh, application route. The state applications can only be made once a year, once for the special projects and one for, once for the um, regular projects. The regular projects are due on April 15th and the um, special projects in November. So uh, once we get through this evening, I really would like the board to express a, an opinion backing that process or not, as you choose. Um, I have to point out that if you go through the state process, you certainly have to wait to be rated to find out where your project lists. You may find that you're going to be waiting five to seven years before you get any hope of state funding, and then that, I think, presents a community with another decision to make. Do you want to continue to try to get at least some state funding? It would not. I have to say, from the nature of all these projects, it would only be a small percentage, but anything is better than nothing, it seems to me. Um, but we would ha then have some specific information and some additional analysis of the buildings and their condition and so forth and so on, and the community could... Um, furthermore, we um, you know, could learn more about the condition of the buildings. And we might, in fact, find that our situation was bad enough to rate us higher than some other community projects, and, and we would have another decision to make. But uh, that's sort of um, answering some of the, uh, or attempting to answer some of the comments, and also giving a little bit of, of insight into how the long range planning would work out. Thank you. Did anybody else decide that they have a comment or anybody that came in? <clears throat> My name is Ben Wilcox, and I just have a few questions after listening to what Dr. Logan had to say. And uh, it just does seem we know we have to move somebody in the decision with these kindergarten or eighth graders. And I just have some concerns about the cost has been mentioned, the safety has been mentioned. I'm glad she talked about the fire exits because that was a concern of mine of moving the kindergartners into the high school. And um, I'm assuming that the third level is the ground level in the high school in the plans. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about is talking about staffing. That's what I keep thinking of. 
is your kindergartner, where is the school nurse going to be, the office staff that collects notes and tells the kids where to go and puts them on the bus, how is that going to be handled at the high school? And how will the busing be handled? And for me, that's a concern because if I have two children going to elementary school, I certainly hope they're going to be getting on the bus at the same time. Um, that's a concern <laughs> for a lot of us. And the social life. We keep talking as though kindergartners do not have a social life, but they're very social beings and they're very observant. And I hope that will be taken into some consideration when you decide to move the children into the high school. Because they learn a lot by observing. And I think it does them a lot of good to be in the same building with first and third graders. But mostly the question I did have was about the staffing for the kindergartners. Obviously, obviously a regular staff would be my regular staff. Uh, we have looked at the issue of um, who would be the office support personnel. And again, I think that's one of the issues that um, would be worked out uh, through a transition team because there certainly are options. Uh, there are a number of them, and we actually, uh, kindergarten, some of the kindergarten staff, myself, and a couple of other people spent some time walking through looking at some of these specific issues and we uh, we were looking at places where there would be telephones, where there would be messages, where there would be intercoms, and et cetera, et cetera. So there are, I mean, we are quite aware that that is an issue. Um, the busing, again, is, there's no particular reason why the bus run can't simply be an extension of the regular one. On the other hand, I would have to raise the issue that I have heard some concerns about parents whose kindergartners are picked up uh, as part of the regular run and then spend half an hour, 45 minutes in some cases, waiting for school to start. Um, and it did occur to some of us in discussing this, maybe this is an opportunity to rethink or relook at kindergarten routes, but that, again, is not an issue. Um, uh, I mean, it's another one of those things that hadn't occurred to me that, of course, parents with multiple children, uh, but at different sites, would want to be sure that they're on the same bus. And those are the kinds of things that a transition team would, would need to look at. It would hardly be, um, uh, you know, we have people expressing different concerns for different reasons, and we need to look at them and see what the best solution is. But the busing itself would not necessarily change because they were here. It would just be two stops. Yes? Thank you. My name's Eric Mann. Um, this is the first opportunity I've had to come to one of these meetings. I wanted to know if in a previous meeting the experience uh, in Portland with having the kindergarten in the high school building has been discussed. I haven't discussed it, no. Uh, because some of my colleagues at work uh, have uh, uh, discussed with this this with me on an anecdotal basis and spoke very positively of the experience in the Portland system uh, where they ex uh, uh, worked within this uh, same scenario that we're discussing with the B1 option. The other thing is I would just uh, make a very gentle rebuttal uh, to two of the previous comments by way of the fact that uh, I think the five-year-old is, uh, yes, extremely observant and at the same time uh, extremely flexible. And uh, I think the uh, seven and eight-year-old, a seventh grader uh, very much looks to a, an eighth grader and uh, to the high school students as, ro as role models. But uh, it's my opinion that a kindergartner, uh, frankly, doesn't know what street the first and second and third grade students uh, live on. You know, they're basically uh, a group unto themselves, and they will uh, carry through as a group, uh, having made friends with one another into the first and second grade whether that be in the high school building or uh, in, a, in a different uh, building. So, uh, comment I wanted to make. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you. Uh, I'm Eric Mann. The last name is spelled M-A-N-N. It's too simple. Nobody ever gets it. Um, we have, my wife and I have a three and a half year old uh, boy and a five year old daughter who uh, will be entering kindergarten next year. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I guess I just have to stand up and say that I am Sherry Gower first. I am a mother of a student that went to kindergarten in the high school. Um, one thing I will say is you people are very fortunate that you've had several meetings on this. When mine went to the high school, I got a letter in the summer saying this is where he's going. That's it. <laughs> but anyway, um, as far as I'm concerned, it was a very, very positive experience. He came to school here in the morning. They dropped the uh, first, second, and third graders. I believe it was fourth graders then in the Ponco school off first. The kindergarten came down here. They didn't feel threatened as to... I mean, he thought it was great. Nobody was picking on him. They got off the bus. They didn't have to worry about if they were going to miss the bus when they go home because they knew they were the only ones that were going to get on that bus. So they'd get them on. And um, I know there's a lot of concerns. I had concerns, but I wouldn't... If I had to do it again and think back now, I... I put them in the high school. They had, I trusted the high school students to babysit my children. If I can't trust them to be down here with them, we have a nursery school down here that high school students work in. Um, I just feel that it's the best alternative. My child had a positive experience. I think yours will. Um, and I just hope that that's the way it goes. I just can't see eighth graders coming down here. I have a student that's in ninth grade right now, and to tell you the truth, <laughs> eighth graders and ninth graders don't mingle very well. <laughs> so uh, I think it maybe is best for the kindergarten to come down here. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening, my name is Becky Fernald, and I have um, two children, one who's currently in first grade, um, <clears throat> and another who's one year old and will be going to kindergarten in a number of years. <laughs> um, but then by that time, my first grade will be heading on towards the older grades, so they're both caught right in the middle of this. And I'm new to this town, and I'm, I've, um, frankly, the reason we moved, one of the big reasons we moved to Cape Elizabeth was because of the school system. It's had a very excellent reputation, and um, I'm extremely pleased with my child's um, first grade experience to this point. Um, I read over the summary report, and one of my my major concerns, I understand completely, um, the problem of the school space, the um, age of the buildings, the need for repair, and I, I first of all, I want to make sure the schools are safe, <laughs> and they meet building code, and that um, we don't have to worry about roofs caving in or anything like that, and I know that's a primary consideration of yours. Um, the issue of the kindergarten, I'm still not sure in my mind about that. Um, I can see the pros and the cons. One question I had was on the tie-in with community services. I know there's quite a number of uh, daycare centers in this area that have preschool and kindergarten combined, and I, I didn't know whether um, how you're thinking of having the kindergarten work with community services, or are they going to be two separate programs in, in uh, two separate areas? I, I'm not clear on that. Uh, yes, the, um, we have what the community services calls extended day, uh, not a preschool program. There is a small preschool, preschool nursery program here on this floor which is really part of the high school experience. Um, the community services program is a separate program. It is certainly our thinking at this time that they would be separate programs. Uh, that's not to say that there aren't some possibilities for uh, maybe some shared staff development or some shared uh, parent outreach or some shared uh, issues in uh, early childhood. Um, and uh, it's entirely possible that we might 
see some connections, but we make no attempt at this point to use a connection. We did talk about it initially because it is a program that has been using space in the high school, uh, frankly, without any real modification um, and making it work. I mean, I recognize, like everything else, it probably has its problems, but that, I think, probably did start the thinking that, well, you know, there's some space there that can be used and so forth and so on. Uh, but there, that again, I see as a planning issue. The um, kindergarten is kindergarten. Extended day is not kindergarten. They should be thought of as two separate programs. Anybody else? Hi, I'm Jill Mowry. Um, I just have a quick comment and a question. Um, I spoke to Ann a couple weeks ago just to let her know that I don't like either option of moving K or 8, but um, if I can, I have a kindergartner this year and a two and a half year old, and um, if I can project myself to having both right now going into that grade, I guess um, if everything's equal to me, it makes more sense to move K as a parent if I was thinking I had a seventh grader and a five year old. Um, for lots of the reasons that people have already gone through. But um, my question then is what the difference in the cost of those two options is. You've talked a lot about the things that would need to be done for the kindergarten to move there. And I'd just like to have a sense of what the cost of that is versus the cost of the eighth grade. Could you just give the cost for all Actually, the eighth grade is a very hard one to cost. We have looked at it and tried, but um, the cost would, that would be the least costly of the three because the cost would mainly be staffing. Um, however, costs also are human costs, and there are some uh, issues, for instance, about disruption of current programs at the middle school itself and our being able to assure um, the same or, or at least the core programs um, continuing as a separate uh, unity or entity. That's what I could not put a dollar figure on, uh, but it's definitely the least costly. The kindergarten option will cost us something in the neighborhood ranging anywhere from about 50000 for the basic modifications. Uh, I have it described to people as they go through the building, we have that uh, lecture hall. I don't know if I've actually talked to the high school about this. Have I talked to you about this? We have? Hopefully they, you know, I don't want <laughs> the, um, There's a lecture hall upstairs that in the 20 years this building has been in, in place, it has not really been utilized. If you go up there and look at the chairs, for instance, they look like they were brand new. They aren't even scratched. Uh, which I think is pretty good mute evidence to the fact that it's a virtually unused space. And so as part of the analysis of this building and what we could use and how we could rethink use of space in this building to uh, maximize it, uh, the architect told us we could take out the tiers, that is it's a tiered lecture hall situation, uh, and turn it into a, either two classrooms or a multi-use uh, room. Um, and those of us who are concerned about the lack of proper play space for, uh, frankly, all of our, our K-3 building uh, saw it as sort of a baby gym. That would cost us somewhere in the neighborhood of 60000 That's a separate piece, not the fencing, not the playground, not the sinks and the rooms and so on. Um, and then finally, uh, we do have some needs in this building that have absolutely nothing to do with moving either the kindergarten or the eighth grade, but have to do with maintenance and a concern we have that this building, even though 20 years old, is not handicapped accessible by current code and we are uh, facing up to the necessity to make all our buildings handicap accessible. And if we do renovations in this building, we may well have to undertake that. Uh, I separated out in three pieces because even if we move the eighth grade, um, we wouldn't be as, as inclined to move ahead with uh, renovating the the lecture hall, but that really is not tied to the necessity to, to move either grade. It would just be a, um, a very nice addition if we do move the kindergarten. So the basic move somewhere in the vicinity of $50,000 in the, our conversations with the architect. Just one with a really quick question. Um, th I, this must have been answered in the previous meeting, but will the, uh, the 
high school girls and the high school and the kindergarten girls be sharing the same bathroom, the actual, the same room? No, that would be, um, we have two bathrooms in that wing, uh, one around the corner where the community services, that's the current girls' bathroom they use by the children who are in the building at the end. Um, and some, I assume there's some high school use of that. And then there's a boys' bathroom around the corner, which would now be in the wing that is the uh, wing for the, uh, for the kindergarten, if that's what it is. And then we would be adding a bathroom, actually, that would be accessed probably in the small room itself, uh, much more under uh, surveillance. Now, we are, I'm still not sure whether we would lock the boys' bathroom because that one does have an entrance on the corridor, because I know that that is a concern with parents, and we had some conversation with kindergarten teachers before we decided we would go ahead and add some bathroom facilities to make them all in one wing. Um, but it does seem prudent, and it, it certainly is a, a legitimate concern. I, I, I lost count, but are we up to four bathrooms? In no. other words, are, we, are, we, are there going to be kindergarten boys with uh, high school boys no. or kindergarten girls with high school girls in the no. same room? No, there should not be. I mean, okay. that's, a, that's the only I understand. question and I had. The, the girls, uh, I guess, you know, again, I sh should have brought, well, I didn't have this on an overhead anyway, and I don't have a blackboard, but the girls' bathroom that we're anticipating would be an additional set of fixtures, okay? Right. That's a new one. And if it would be in the place that the architect was kind of figuring around, again, these are preliminary sketches, but we all know it. Um, we know enough to know that this is likely to be the, the place we would go for. Uh, that would be really a secluded entrance. The boys' bathroom, which is on the corridor uh, across from the guidance uh, room now, uh, to assure there would be no high school use, uh, one of the things we did talk about was simply locking it and having um, staff, um, and again, the whole issue of support staff some kind of uh, secretarial staff that would be working with the kindergarten teachers in some capacity help, um, you know, unlock it. And uh, we would have to work that out and deal with it, but that is certainly one rule we can take. Thank you. You're welcome. We also thought we might put some Mickey Mouse decals in there, which would kind of discourage the use of teenage use of the bathrooms. <laughs> Sue McMullen, and I'm a parent of four, so I'll be with you for a long time. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's because I'm a parent of four or because I'm not real organized, but today was the first time I got in to actually see the proposed facility, and um, I'm relatively impressed with what's been going on. I do have some concerns, and this is not to assume necessarily that kindergarten would be here, except it sounds like maybe that might be the lesser of the two evils. Um, but let's con knowing that I'm going to have a kindergarten child enter, and knowing that I have a child in third grade and one that was in second grade for a little while but is at another institution for a while, <coughs> a healthy institution, um, I have a couple of things. One is um, I'm slightly concerned about health care. Obviously, the issues for high school kids are not the same issues for kindergarten children. And whether our high school nurse will be treating those children or whether Darlene would have to do a quick sprint over here, whatever, however that's worked. That's okay. I'll just keep going here. No, you can do it after. Um, well, both uh, here and at uh, the middle school, we have part-time nursing assistants. Um, and it is my understanding how it's working now is that if one of them isn't available, the other certainly fills in. Um, Mandy, as a parent, I think would be uh, very suitable for dealing with children. Um, no, no reason why that would not be the case. Obviously, um, however, she's not here all the time. And of course, in all of our buildings, we sometimes are faced with that situation, but we do have them on a rotating basis, so one of them is available. I think you addressed the inside physical education space as a possibility for these little ones, but right now, those classrooms, it doesn't look appear to be that there's an adequate space for inside kinds of play for them in a physical education setting. So, I, But you did sort of address that already. Um, being involved with a private institution myself, I think that the most important part of, the, of all of this is the morale issue for staff. And in order to make and have children happy and content, teachers need to really feel good about what they're up to. 
I don't know the answers to that. I haven't tried to open that box, Pandora's box up, but I only say that because I have empathy for anybody who has to make changes and realize that if they're not into it and loving it, that those kids might be feeling some undercurrent there. So I just bring that up as an issue, which I'm sure you've addressed, but it's a concern of mine as a parent. Thank you. I would urge you to be in touch with the kindergarten teachers. They have um, been down here in the building looking around. We've, we've had some, uh, a number of conversations. I'm very impressed with their uh, open-mindedness. They've been working through the process with us. I know that very understandably the first uh, first uh, knowledge of, of this did not come necessarily as a gift from above, but um, I think we are at a point where there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of possibilities, and uh, frankly a terrific staff. So I, I think what might make you feel better is to give one of them a call. Hi, my name is John Greslick. I've got a little girl who's going into kindergarten next year. And uh, many of the issues have been touched that I'm interested in. Uh, first, I'd like to say that I feel strongly that Pond Cove School would be the best place for my child to be going to kindergarten. Uh, unfortunately, I can see the writing on the wall, and I can see us leaning towards the, uh, the high school. And uh, so I'll address those issues instead of trying to change your mind about going to Pond Cove. Uh, I think that the wing that, the, that they're considering for the kindergarten is very nice. Um, what, a few things I'd like to see done. I would like to see uh, that wing physically closed off in some way. I understand the wall could not be put there, but I wonder if... Um, fire doors that could be put there to physically close that wing off from the rest of the high school. Uh, these, I hope, could be kept closed and, of course, unlocked. And it would, therefore, provide a safe, quiet environment for the children in their own little world within the high school. Uh, I would like to move anything that's uh, high school out of that wing. And uh, I think there is enough space in the high school with uh, probably uh, some crying and screaming from some of the staff to, to move everything out and keep that into just a kindergarten wing. Um, I'm sorry if I came in late. I hope this hasn't been discussed already. Um, the other things that people mentioned, the, uh, the uh, bathrooms, I think that they should be on the same wing and downsize for the children's use. And of course, for the children's use only and not for the high school people. The playground was the other issue that I was interested in. Um, I think a new, a new playground should be constructed, fenced in, and located conveniently for the children, not necessarily in the location that the present playground is in now. Um, I'm somewhat concerned about the stairs that lead to um, the playground now being relatively steep for small children to be going up several times a day. Um, I see this problem has been well researched, and I'm very impressed with all the work that's been done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we did cover some of those issues. Um, the kindergarten teachers themselves don't like the stairs either and are looking to take children out by the entrance, um, the community services entrance and around. Um, it does not, none of us have found another spot for the playground besides the spot that's there. Uh, but the fencing is a general uh, given. I mean, we, we, I think the darting of children is well known and we would not want to have that as a problem, uh, but frankly, we don't see any other possible spot for kindergarten uh, playground. We will, if this is what we're going to do, we're going to have to make it the best we can. And I think the rest of that we pretty well covered. Is there something like that? Thank Polly Morris, and, and I have high school kids. Um, your comment, Connie, about the lecture hall awakened me. I um, would have a really hard time. I think it would be dreadfully unfortunate to lose a lecture hall in a high school. Um, for that not to be used presently or in the recent past, I guess I want to ask why. I can't understand that. It seems like it would be adequately placed in a high school particularly in the upper levels where they, they are transition years anyway. Um, I hear a lot about maintenance 
and uh, the conditions of the buildings and everything. But I guess I'm, I'm looking to what's happening in the classrooms. And I'm thinking about um, science. I know in seventh and eighth grade there is very little hands-on activity. I know in the high school the equipment, the labs, is far from state-of-the-art. So I'm wondering what's happening there, what will happen, while all the other things are falling into place. Um, I have real concerns about those areas. The other thing I think about, and this certainly doesn't affect my kids, but I think about many kids who have had the opportunity for um, languages at earlier levels. These kids are going to be moving up with greater competency, so I'm wondering what's happening to these kids as their demands increase. So in the high school, there are going to be needs, not that there aren't needs now, but there should be language labs. How will these things be taken care of? I just, it really bothers me to think that there would be approximately 50,000 whatever spent for extra playground, for little bathroom needs when there are really um, educational needs in the high school in terms of facility. And I think curriculum needs to be addressed as well as the facility to meet those needs. I agree. Try to put it all in the budget. tried unsuccessfully to yell from the back and so here I am in the front. Uh, my name is Donald Hankinson. I have a daughter in the first grade and a son um, three years old. Um, my question is, uh, this is the first uh, meeting that I've been able to come to as well um, and what I was yelling about from the back was what I perceived to be a third option which was the renovation of the middle school and since I've been here, it seems to me the talk has pretty much been about two options, whether uh, the eighth grade children should be moved over here or whether the kindergarten children should be moved. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened to that other option. In light of the fact that there are some very real concerns which are attempting to be addressed by moving kindergarten children over here, and concerns um, from some of the high school um, parents of high school students about the changes that will happen to the high school as a result of moving kindergarten children for what I think is envisioned as a temporary move and in light of your comments about the fact that major renovations even for safety reasons already have to be made to the middle school and it seems it would be less disruptive to all of the children I'm wondering what happened to that option. Actually that uh, that is part of the long-range planning. Um, there's a $4 million price tag on renovating the middle school um, that's absent any need to add program space or something of that nature. Um, but the major reason why that's not wrapped up into the eighth grade or kindergarten discussions that are going on right here is that there is, uh, we're talking major renovation, heating, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you have to get people out of the building before you can do it. And it's the nature of that renovation is such that you can't do it piece by piece uh, in the summer. Um, so we have to have a total package of how we are going to move kids around so that that renovation can be accomplished. One of the attractive things about the so-called B1 modified option, which is the one that, that talks about adding to the old high school and the gym and the connector link, using those as kind of an anchor and building out, um, that would be the neatest, cleanest way for us to continue school while getting into major rehabbing, because that would you'd start with the building. Um, school would go on around it, and when the building, a certain portion of that building was finished, then you would start moving some grades into that. Um, in some cases, when you get into these kinds of projects, you have to move people more than once. You try hard to plan it so that won't happen, but I have to be honest and say occasionally you have multiple moves. But uh, we have sat down and planned that one through, and that would allow us to continue offering school without major disruption once we have at least reshuffled things as we're talking about right now. All of the others would require us to do a variety of of uh, pushing around things and doing the renovation in smaller pieces, um, they can be accomplished. There's, but but our, the, the renovation of the middle school does not solve our space problem because we're going to be jam-packed next year anyway, even moving a grade to the high school in both Pine Cove and the middle school. 
um, and so it would be impossible to do any renovation. My name is uh, Ingrid Stressinger. I'm a parent of uh, two daughters, one who is four and, and one is 13 months. I'm also a teacher at the elementary school. And I've heard a lot this evening about concerns about staffing um, that would be affected at the eighth grade if the eighth grade were to come to the high school, and a little bit about how that would affect kindergarten. But as somebody that deals with this on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I have some questions about how uh, when I know that the specials, uh, art, music, phys ed, those kinds of services, as well as speech therapy, occupational therapy, uh, testing that needs to be done, those schedules of that staff are so full as it is right now. How do you foresee if the kindergarten is at the high school being able to meet all of the needs of the children who are in grades one to three, as well as getting the kindergartners what they would need in the area of allied arts as well as um, special services? And in another side of that, if the uh, fourth grade were to move into Pond Cove, um, how would that work out with the fourth grade be going over to uh, the middle school to receive services? And if that is the case, that would seem like a lot of the day would be in transit for them back and forth. I'm just concerned how that would work out. Well, let's start with the kindergarten. First of all, they're not getting full music and art services or not full art services, I understand now anyway. Um, and that is as much a factor of the number of children that the specials are trying to serve. As the grades have gone up, one of the cumulative effects of increasing enrollment over a period of years and over a period of, of grades is that you, when you're staffing specials, if you have one person and you add 30 kids uh, over a period of time, what usually happens instead of having art three times a week, they have it twice a week and sometimes going back to once a week. That's not a factor of moving a grade out. That's a factor of how many youngsters there are to be served. At what point does the board make a decision that we've reached overload and that we simply can't continue the program? Um, and I would uh, just simply say that in our preliminary conversations about providing services to kindergarten, we are well aware of that in the total balance of how many K-8 um, students now our specialists will have to serve and of course the, the extra numbers now are going to be at the middle school which will be putting extra burdens on that particular part of the staff and how much we will be rearranging the people we have will be all part of, of the total picture. Um, the issue of moving kindergarten does add time. Um, the staffing issue however is one of making sure that there is time in the schedule for that and if not how much of a program will they have and how much does that, re does that imply an extra person or do the pressures throughout the K-8 system imply an extra person or an extra part-time person? Uh, at this time, we're looking at those issues, but we haven't, um, as we work on the budget, we haven't put that all together yet. Just uh, one other question, if you would, please. Um, do you foresee in the budget you're preparing making some sort of a media center in the high school for kindergarten students and how, how do you foresee that working out? As I said earlier this evening, I would see the media center as one of the issues that the staff um, has looked at. I know we've had some conversation about that. I don't see us replicating a media center in that wing. I see us making uh, available materials and so forth. And uh, the degree to which that would happen, I think, is up to you know the staff to research and decide. Else. Okay. <clears throat> Comments or questions from the board? Uh, there's a different group here than the first time I made this statement, and perhaps there's a different audience at home. I did want to make a comparison to the concerns that some parents have regarding the specials, the art, the music, and the physical education that is offered to our current kindergarten. I'd like to do it by basis of comparison at first. That is the average day for a kindergarten student is 2.5 hours. The average day for an eighth grader just happens to be eight hours. That's mostly because of sports. As we know, the regular school day is only six and a half hours. The kindergarten currently serves about 3% of their students in specials. Um, physical education, music, and art are the concerns uh, that are not under, uh, excuse me, are the subject areas that are not under the direct control of the classroom teacher. 
in addition to physical education, music and art, uh, and also specials, which at the uh, eighth grade level is between 15 and 20 percent of the school population. The middle school moving to the high school will impact the 400 plus high school students um, because we will also have to worry about specials that involve industrial technology, computer, foreign language, the media center. Um, there's extensive guidance work being done for our middle school age students that is not done for the kindergarten students. We have a gifted and talented program known as Challenge. The 7th and 8th grade band practice together and that would be almost impossible as well as chorus and that is uh, a co-curricular uh, which is different from the music offering. And 86 uh, percent of our middle school students participate in sports and of course they would have to leave the high school to go to the middle school facility to um, engage in those sports. Uh, there's also a, a concern that I have uh, with two teenage uh, students. Uh, they were both kindergartners, uh, so I do remember. It hasn't been that long, but a lot has happened in between. And that is, uh, these um, students are very, very social in terms of uh, this is bonding um, beyond um, anything you can imagine, and I had seven 13-year-olds with me this weekend, and I've seen it very close up. Uh, <laughs> but one, one of the uh, real concerns that I have is that there are people without a lot of historical perspective about um, what has happened to the incoming eighth grade class, which be, would be the affected uh, class if the eighth grade were moved to the high school. I've been very public with my view. Uh, that I do not support the 8th grade moving to the high school and anyone who remembers in 1990 town council elect Rosemary Reed lobbying the town council in public meetings on camera shaking at the microphone even like I do now about please don't send anyone to the high school not because it's a terrible place just because it's not appropriate um, but if you have to send somebody um, please make sure we've exhausted all possibilities in 1988 we had this uh, concern and the town council approved a portable, no one moved. In 1990, the town council approved a portable, so no one had to move. In 1992, a portable is not an option. Uh, we are now looking and planning with a more long-term as opposed to band-aid approach. We're trying to be cost-effective. We're trying to look at long-range, educationally sound decisions that are supported by the community and by the parents as well as the staff. By the way, the administrator that sent Mrs. Gower's son here is still with us in the school system, but he ducked when that comment was made. Things are being done differently. I have personally evaluated all the existing programs. I have looked at this move in terms of K-12. Uh, one of the concerns that I have is that a lot of people don't know, and I started to mention this, I'm sorry, the eighth grade class that would be affected, if you can go back with me, if they moved to the high school, as eighth graders, they would have been in the high school. As a seventh grader, they were in the middle school. As a sixth grader, they were in the middle school. As a fifth grader, they were in Pond Cove. As a fourth grader, they were in the middle school. And as a third grader, they were in Pond Cove. We have always tended to rearrange the middle, and unfortunately, the eighth grade is not the middle in a K-12 program because 9-12 has been proved over and over to be an educationally sound, great configuration. The process of education does begin at birth. It does change at 5, 10, 15 years, and every day in between. One of the concerns that I have is that we have a balanced approach. And by me, I'm talking about me and other members of the board. Every school is represented here. I have two teenagers. They're a boy and a girl, once in the middle school, once in the high school. So I have uh, been able to evaluate it from all those uh, different age groups and different needs. I think it's very important to know that the incoming eighth grade does not want to come to the high school. I think it's important to note that the current high school 912 doesn't want the eighth grade here. I think it's very important to know that some of the high school students. Just, just hold the microphone a little away from you. We'll help. I'm sorry. That was that was my security blanket. <laughs> um, well, I think I can go back to where I was. The. Um, Current high school students, uh, many of them that I talk to, and I do speak to many of them, and we have some in the room right now who have previously spoken on camera, and, and their record is, I mean, their comments are in the record. But 
A lot of the students didn't know kindergarten wasn't already here because there are over 140, five, four, and three-year-old students here. Um, the, if the kindergarten were to move to the high school, the high school lunch period would not be interrupted. And I know that sounds like it's a minor thing, but the eighth grade students would be competing uh, with the uh, high school students for the gym. Uh, in the kindergarten scenario, there would be separate space that would be appropriate for kindergarten age and sized bodies. This space that we're in right now is the high school cafeteria. Uh, if you come here between the periods that are behind me when it's lunch, you'll see that it is uh, very uh, widely used. I do want to apologize to uh, many of the high school students who have been somewhat offended by the comments of middle school parents and maybe even me not that we think that high school students are terrible kids and a, and a rotten influence on eighth grade kids. It is more what the incoming eighth grade would want to do to impress the high school students uh, than what the high school students would do to try to include the eighth grade in their activity. Again, as a seventh grade parent and a ninth grade parent, um, my, my daughter doesn't have too much in common with her brother anymore because they are at separate schools. and. Until he's at the high school, I imagine that will continue. I, I do want people to know that uh, when I cast my vote, um, that I have looked at K-12. One of the parts of this discussion that we haven't had, and I don't want to open a Pandora's box, but we have made a commitment uh, when we make a decision tonight about what is an educationally sound uh, grade configuration. I've been very outspoken, and I campaigned partly on this platform. The most appropriate from everything I've read and from the interviews I've held with staff that in this district and outside that a K4, 5, 8, 9, 12 configuration is the most appropriate. By moving the kindergarten to the high school, we will have space in Palm Cove for the fourth grade. We will have appropriate space, 5, 8, for the middle school population that will be there. And of course, 9, 12 has been addressed. We are trying to take the long view. If we move the eighth grade to the high school, we will not have room for the fourth grade at Pond Cove, and we will have to continue with four or five across the way. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for coming to this meeting and previous meetings and sharing their input. It's been very helpful for me. One point that I think we need to keep in mind is that this is going to be the first of many changes that the school system is going to have to address. As a child following my father around with an architect at different building sites, the concept of having everybody move once neatly is uh, heroic, I think, at best. And there will be multiple opportunities for different grade levels to do their part in the renovation and improvement of our school system. There will be a number of difficult problems, and this certainly is one. When the problem was first brought to my attention, my initial impression was that naturally the eighth graders would move. Um, having a seventh grader, it, the concrete answer was that the seventh graders are about the size of eighth graders and ninth graders, so they would be the ones to move. I would have to say that parents, uh, both individually in discussions with me and as addressing the board, have changed my position. What has been particularly um, important to me, in addition to the number of arguments, is the parents of children who had who spent their kindergarten in the high school felt that it was a positive experience. Um, likewise, students who spent kindergarten in the high school have also noted very positive experiences. And then recently, the, the Portland experience, I think, has also been helpful. It certainly will require some adjustment on the part of kindergartners if, if the board votes in that direction. However, that I don't think is necessarily all bad. Um, our eldest daughter had the opportunity to, to spend kindergarten in Minnesota and first grade in California. And those are significantly far apart. And that's a, that required significant adjustment. However, that wasn't an all bad experience, as many children who've been raised with Army parents can tell you. She again had the opportunity to spend fourth grade in California and fifth grade in Maine. Again, a significant adjustment. However, I think that she is more independent. I think she's more um, self-confident about her decisions and about herself for having been put in those situations. And so, although it's difficult, I think there are definite advantages for any child going through some difficult experience as long as there's been support at home and guidance for the 
trials and tribulations that they're going to have to address. Um, just once again, thank you for your input. It's been very helpful for me. Thank you all very much for coming out tonight. Um, we have two choices, and I've thought about them. Actually, I've thought about them for seven years. Um, the year we moved here was the year they put fourth grade at the middle school and called the middle schoolers and put them on a middle school bus, and that was that. And I think we've sort of been at crosswise ever since then, nothing working out exactly as it should, and unfortunately tonight we don't have the perfect plan either. I feel like if the eighth grade go to the high school, it would not be a bad experience. Um, I think the present high schoolers are a great group of kids, and I think they'd help in the transition, and I think they'd treat those eighth graders fairly, and they'd treat them kindly, and there'd be some, some fine learning experiences for those students at the high school that they couldn't get at the middle school. Um, for instance, even though the science labs aren't state-of-the-art, I think they're, they're better than they are at the middle school. Uh, that lovely auditorium for fine arts presentations, uh, being right there, having access at the swimming pool, uh, the music and the industrial arts facilities are, are, uh, are very nice, and I think it would be a nice situation in, in many ways. But then I have to think about what would they be giving up in order to spend their eighth grade year at this high school. Uh, and what they'd be giving up is their year of being the oldest and most experienced group at the middle school. Something that they've been waiting for for four years and it finally comes and all of a sudden they're at the bottom of the totem pole again at the high school. Uh, I think they call this BMOC, don't they? Big man on campus. And that's, that's what I... I I think that they would be missing. It's the year that they head the student council. They plan the dances, the social events. They compile the yearbook. They're the ones that are first chair in the band. They're the stars of the sport, the eighth grade sports teams. And it's a long way from eighth grade to twelfth grade when you get that chance again to be the kingpin of the school system. I had two boys that were, were freshmen here at this high school. One was a freshman the first year we moved here and another came up two years later as a freshman. And it was, it was a difficult year to be a freshman boy. It, it, it just is. Uh, and I don't think my children are uniquely different or shy or, or have any particular problems, but for a freshman boy, uh, all the eighth grade girls that liked you last year now are looking at the sophomore and junior boys and you're just sort of you just sort of, just it's hard to fit in that year. And, and I'd hate to see us move that down and include those eighth grade boys because I have a feeling that, the, the, that their uh, timidity and, and loss of purpose and exactly who am I, uh, I hate to see that happen a year earlier. The girls, on the other hand, uh, a lot of freshman girls date a lot of senior boys. And, and you have the situation where people are hopping in and out of cars to be taken home from school and to go places. And, and that's a real burden to a parent to, you know, to try to keep track. I mean, you can make the rule, you, you cannot get in a car with anybody driving. But, but that's, uh, that's a difficult time also because they're, they're, they seem to be enjoying uh, the situation sometimes more than you wish they would. <laughs> And the boys are, are having a difficult time at the high school being freshmen. And so to detain that another year would certainly, I think, be a positive thing to do. And as Rosemary said a few minutes ago, they, the seventh graders I've talked to really don't want to go to the high school. It was just no one even had a glimmer in their eye. It was just no way to the few that I know. So that I accepted that as as fairly strong statement that, that they're not feeling comfortable with the situation either. The kindergartners, on the other hand, uh, I would be, I think, a lot more concerned about this if, if it were my first child going. Uh, I think if it's your second child, you're probably a lot more mellow about this because you've seen your children 
and how flexible they are and how they do fit in and how they things that, that you thought might be a real problem turn out not to be a problem. When, when we sent the fourth grade uh, on the bus with the eighth graders, there were many parents very anxiety filled about that. It was my third child and I thought, you know, sounds great. And, uh, and it wasn't a problem. And, and I, I think that the kindergartners will be very happy. I think they're flexible. Uh, the high schoolers will be happy to have them there. And I think, and I have to give credit for the reason of the flexibility. I think, I think it's a great team of kindergarten teachers you've got <coughs> that will be tending your children at the high school, if that, in fact, is what passes. Um, they're, they're real high quality people and they're already working on this with us making sure that the needs that they feel are, are need to be in place for it to be a good experience are there and we're committed to that and I think they, they know we'll do the best we can given the dollars we have and, and then some. Uh, so because of the great team of teachers and I, and I think it, you know, of course it'll depend on the parents. If the parents have a, a nervous attitude that might rub off on your child, but just if you just go into it knowing that they're, they're going to have the best quality education that Cape Elizabeth can give them, I, I think you'll find that is exactly what happens. Um, I talked to every parent I could think of whose child was here 10 years ago, and they all said it was great. Our kids felt like little kings and queens, which I'm, I wasn't sure that was a compliment, but they said they just, they were treated with just, just such adornment by the older students that they, they were sorry when it was time to leave. So I will be voting for the kindergarten come to the high school. I wish I was voting tonight for a big, beautiful complex that would be completed by the end of the summer, but this is the best I can do, and I, and I hope that it uh, works out as well as, as I believe that it will. I have a couple questions if the rest of the board will bear with me. I was not able to attend the meeting you, that some of you attended with the kindergarten teachers, so I couldn't ask some questions. Um, some of the parents tonight have alluded to um, what's going to happen with music, art, uh, phys ed, those kind of um, allied arts. I guess I need, it's been six years since I've had a kindergartner, and I guess I need to know in a two and a half hour day, five days a week, how much of this is taken up with music, art, phys ed, and media, media center or library visits? If somebody could answer those for me. Well, I can give you, I can give you a generalized answer. I'm just looking to see if we have, um, Nancy might be able to give you a little more precise answer. Why don't I, rather than just give you a generalized answer, I'd like to be uh, more specific than what you're going to hear, Charlie. Uh, the, as Connie indicated, several years ago, the uh, art and music services were downsized somewhat for kindergarten. And I had an opportunity to talk one-on-one uh, -on -one with Marie Hayes and with uh, Judy Page about these concerns, as well as um, Shari. And I wouldn't want to embarrass Shari, but I might ask her specifically if she might address the amount of time that the kindergarten children spend in media center. Can you help me with that, Shari? Yes. Um, the children spend in the media center 30 minutes once a week. I don't know if everyone heard that. The kindergarten children access the media center 30 minutes once a week. The um, art and music, uh, Charlie, and I will need to get back to you specifically on this, but I spoke with Marie, and Marie indicated that they're on a shared schedule and that the children come, uh, they're not given full services. They get a half a year services when they're, when they're uh, getting art and music and it rotates. They may get art at one, one point and that will flip and they will get uh, music. And I will call you specifically to, to uh, fill you in on that. Okay, another question uh, with kindergarten involvement in assembly Several Things, years, yeah. last year when we did the assembly. How often does the K, K-5 at this point have, have joint assemblies? assemblies? We, we did two historical assemblies. One we did uh, 
two years ago as an attempt to try to see. We really wanted the children to see what 850 children looked like and staff assembled in one spot. So um, two years ago, we did, we did that assembly to welcome students to school and so forth. And then last year, as Barbara Powers stepped down from her position as the uh, principal of Pond Cove, we had another assembly. So we've done two assemblies in two and a half years. And we have no plans in the future for doing another assembly <laughs> because they're very difficult to do. It's tough to be intimate with 860 people. Pardon me. And, oh, yes. We, that's, thank you, Loretta. That, we had half of the students there because you realize there are four classes, morning and afternoon, and they were the afternoon students attended, basically, unless parents escorted children for the, the assembly. When you do a reading program, which you usually yes. have a theme once a year, is the kindergarten that involved? Yes, they are. Any theme work or any of those kinds of things, the integrated artists, uh, they have as much access to those those programs as, as the other students, K five, I mean, one five would. Uh, there's a couple other concerns. One um, was with the, the access to the nursing. Uh, the nurse right now is in that wing, I believe. Is there is there a move to move her? In um, our no, I'm talk, no, I'm talking at the high school. Okay. Uh, yes, we did look at that uh, situation again. From I think we were talking about people's concerns about having any high school use in that wing. And the more we looked at it, the more sense it made to move it. Um, that's not a final decision. I mean, these are all preliminary kinds of things that are dependent on exactly which way you go. Um, but it does seem, frankly, sensible to dedicate that wing to, um, to kindergarten if that's the way it comes out. Um, in our previous, in fact, a week ago, when we had our school board meeting and some parents got up and talked, there was a concern about a parent who had come to visit the high school to look at the facilities about the milling and mingling of high school students in that lobby, and I'm wondering what would be done to kind of police or keep that relatively free. Well, I think the um, obviously there's if you you know there's a good use since the high school lockers and classrooms now are fully utilized as high school spaces, some of that surely is coming from that use. If that's not used that way, we'll cut down on some of that traffic. Um, we were looking at, a gentleman this evening brought up the issue as he um, did before when he visited the building, is there any possibility of putting doors? Um, we have walked through there with the uh, Frank Locker, the architect. He's pretty dubious about that particular issue, but again, nothing is crossed off in stone in this at this point. Um, but we were talking about ways to make that seem like a separate space. I mean, there are dividers or kiosks, that kind of type of things that can um, actually act as barriers, and you know, we've at least looked at that kind of thing. Is there currently room at Pond Cove for fourth grade? Uh, essentially, the classroom spaces, and again, uh, we are really in the staffing procedure right now and also looking at exact number of rooms. You want to answer that one, Nancy? I'm sorry, I wanted to know about is there room in Pond Cove to move the entire fourth grade in? I know we've had. very good question and it's something that we're hoping that we'll address through budget and might be a good spot time to begin to lobby for some uh, some of our concern uh, we're looking to increase a fourth grade section next year we're hoping with your blessing to go from six sections to seven sections at fourth grade that then leads us to a dilemma uh, are we able to house all seven sections in the Lunt, from the Lunt building up to the kindergarten, what's now the kindergarten section. I don't, we don't know yet. Those are, those are basically under discussion and as uh, one board member, I believe it was Mark, said there would be lots of opportunities for, for many of our grades to be sharing and moving about. In the renovation process, or in looking to do some renovating, grades are going to need to make, make to be flexible and uh, if all seven sections are housed in that building 
in the Lunt building and in the, um, what is the Pine Cove section, we will need to re-examine some of the classroom spaces, the use of some of those spaces as such, i.e. what is now being used for Gretchen Bird's program, uh, the Integrated Arts program. We will need to look at some of the specialist areas. Uh, frankly, there isn't enough room at this point, but we're going to need to examine that. Nancy Hutton and I had done some discussion along with Connie and uh, talking about the need to perhaps to do some sharing with the, where the in, uh, intermediate students are presently. And it's a very real possibility that there may be some of the fourth grade classes remaining and there will be some sharing there. And, and uh, one of the parents that spoke tonight you know, talked about that fact. Okay. I have one more question. Um, with, if the kindergarten should move, be moved to the high school and the fourth grade, the current third grade class stays at the Lund building as a fourth grade class, that leaves one. That leaves the fifth grade at the current middle school. Um, you, as assistant principal, right now have primary focus for fourth and fifth. How do you see? How does the superintendent see your role? Well, I see the issue of um, the principal and, su and assistant principal almost acting as co-principals at this point uh, with the two different buildings and so on. And if we add a third building, we are clearly um, needing that kind of administrative structure. Um, I do think that this is a fluid situation. We will, we're moving towards a more definite kind of building uh, enclosed um, situation, but at least it's all under the K-5 administrative structure. Um, I would see, for instance, in kindergarten, separated out here, one of the two administrators would make kindergarten liaison, et cetera, his, er, his excuse me, her main, um, you know, one of them would be designated more or less the main contact person, although I would, would I know that they do share, uh, get being in touch with all five grades, all six grades at, at the present time. Again, I think this is another type of issue that needs to be worked out by a transition team. Um, it is actually a lot easier for us to talk about the kindergarten issues than it is to even begin to talk about the, the kinds of splinter pieces that will come up with the eighth grade. Um, if you would like Nancy to speak to that, um, to give you some feel for those, we can also do that now. So are, in this transition year, are we really looking towards moving the fifth grade back to the middle school as part of the middle school? Or is that going to be the board's? Well, I would suggest to you that the options that, that you are looking at as long-range options do, in fact, ask you to make that distinction. Um, there is a, there is a uh, all the, the B options do talk about a K-4, 5A, and 9-12 configuration. The reason, uh, one of the reasons why this district is struggling with these issues is the fact that those buildings are so close together that it is physically possible for us to have grades contained in more than one building. I mean, believe me, um, I've you know, been working in districts where there's 10 miles between buildings where you do not have that possibility. You just don't, uh, or in fact, you do, but you simply uh, divide them geographically. Uh, here we don't have to make any of those geographical divisions. We don't have to even replicate all our specials because people get a more difficult schedule, but it is actually possible for people to be stretched. But if you are actually going from the D-wing in the eighth grade as a, a special staffer, all the way down to the remotest classroom um, at the uh, old high school, you're going further than you would be if you were crossing the mall. So that there's a certain amount of timing and what have you that we have to look at. All of those issues are important, but they pale in comparison to the kind of thinking that people have to do in multiple buildings. Having served on the school space study committee for over a, for a year, actually over a year, and having looked at looked at looked at buildings, having looked at numerous grade grouping offerings. In fact, we looked. We posed nine options, and we actually, after we submitted our report. Administration came up with a tenth option, which is the B11. Um, I can tell you the the one option that I was the most excited about serving on the committee was actually option C, which moved the seventh and eighth grade to the high school. 
because I could see a 7th, 8th, 9th kind of middle school, 10th, 12th high school. I saw much more in common between 7th and 9th graders and 10th and, and, uh, 10th and 12th graders. But when you start to do that and you start to look at the numbers projected in five years, you suddenly used an, a beautiful underutilized facility, you maxed it out. I, one of the positive things I saw about moving the seventh and eighth grade is that you kept, kept two relatively close age groups together so that moving the eighth grade, they didn't feel isolated and it was much more compatible. But they, they had more option to some nice facilities, some nice um, lab facilities, um, some nice industrial technology facilities, and, and I saw it as a very positive thing. But the underlying thing was we again would be maxing out a particular part of the system. So, of course, that negated that as a, as a possibility. It also was one of probably the most least expensive as far as uh, total cost, as far as renovations. And being physically conservative, that was very appealing. But again, we would be in the same boat we are with the middle school of maxing out the system. So when it came to looking at the impact of moving, whether it's the kindergarten or the eighth grade, eighth grade which seemed to be the only two viable options um, for to be next year's needs uh, of space constraints in the middle school, I had to start looking at the amount of time that kids spent in school. And when you look at two and a half hours a day versus um, anywhere from six and a half to eight hours a day of an eighth grader, and you look at the number of, of programs and services that those, those children in eighth grade utilize, and you start having to share those between <coughs> schools, it impacts the staff a lot more than a two and a half hour self, relatively self-contained classroom of kindergarten does. Um, I have a feeling that in the move of moving, if it's the kindergarten, that, that the administration and the board are looking at really making uh, space appropriate facilities, which I don't think was done even 10 years ago with the kindergarten. I think it was a quick decision. I think the kids were moved here. The kids had a relatively good, good experience. But I think that for the first time, I think the community, that the board has asked for community input. And I think that they, they, they're listening and what concerns are, are making them space appropriate. And I think the board's going to try to do that if that's the decision. Having spent, as I said, over a year looking at, at facilities and having looked at grade group offerings and what my choice was, but again, it doesn't really fulfill the long-term needs of the system. I think that I, at this point in time, would have to go with the, with grade at least impacts the system, and I think that's the kindergarten. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Charlie and I served on the same committee, and we have many of the same thoughts. Really, my thinking evolved very much as his did, and I really thought originally that it would make more sense for the eighth grade to move. Um, however, for, for many of the reasons that Charlie stated, but also because I got an awful lot of phone calls um, from people um, who have kids at various points in the system. Um, the overall thinking really did seem to be that it would be more detrimental for the eighth graders to move um, unless we could make a really separate space and that didn't make a lot of sense unless you had seventh grade. With the added cost and the overloading of building down the road, that just really didn't make sense. Um, so I'm, I'm going to vote in favor of moving the kindergarten, um, realizing that in the long term it will help us preserve our, our uh, optimum grade groupings of K through four, five through eight, nine through 12, and realizing that this is a very difficult move for people who have kids in the system uh, coming into the system um, and for staff. Um, but I really do think we have to look at the positive side of this. I think there are a lot of opportunities here in this move for parents to really be um, involved in designing the space, um, designing the program as a separate entity. And a lot of times kindergarten really is looked at kind of as an add-on program in terms of 
of you know, some of the special programs like art and music. Um, this really gives us an opportunity to be creative and, and look for opportunities. I, I see you know, possibilities in having maybe first grades adopt uh, kindergarten classes and um, you know, teacher, first grade teachers coming down and teaching in, in kindergarten. There are just an awful lot of ways that we can make that transition easier for the kids. And there are, I think there will be a lot of opportunities for volunteers to really get um, involved in the move, uh, making the space attractive, fixing the playground. Um, I really think it can be a way to bring the community together and really get involved in this, in this move. Um, on the other hand, this, the issue of the fourth grade not staying together, was uh, this was the first time I heard of it tonight. And for some of the same reasons that I didn't uh, favor the eighth grade moving in terms of staffing problems, I would really like to see classes in a grade level stay together. That means they have to move for specials or, or whatever, that's one thing. But I really think all the classrooms at one grade level, we should do our utmost to keep them together. Thank you. Well, after this long and careful process, I too have become convinced that uh, the better of two less than ideal alternatives is to move the kindergarten to the high school. Uh, I'm not going to repeat uh, many of the things we've heard tonight and from the board and from the parents and from the administrators and uh, the many things that we board members have heard individually over the telephone and in letters from many parents who have contacted us. But I have become convinced that that mix of academics and social aspects, the logistics, our long-term building needs, uh, and to a certain extent the finances, uh, but that's probably fourth, that is fourth on the list, uh, those factors have convinced me that this is the better of, of these two alternatives. I would like to comment, however, on the quality of the debate. Uh, it's really been very different from many of the debates we've had in the past over these difficult issues. And I think everybody involved is to be congratulated or to feel good about that because uh, I think everybody has listened carefully to all the various points of view and tried to put themselves in the other person's position uh, to think beyond uh, their own narrow interests, uh, you know, where their child is placed in this particular process. And I. I think it's really been extraordinary, and I think that as we go into what are clearly very tough times on a number of fronts, uh, this, this is a very important development, and I just hope we can keep it up. Now, on a procedural matter, I'm not quite sure what we would be approving tonight, and I'm a little reluctant to just vote for moving the kindergarten uh, to the high school without knowing how we're going to address these issues of security, uh, use of the bathrooms, what the playroom's going to look like, uh, what separation there's going to be. And so I'd just like us to spend a little time talking about who's going to be on the transition team, uh, what it's going to do, and uh, at what point it's going to come back to the board and say, we can meet substantially all of these concerns that have been expressed, or we can only meet part of them. So. Before we vote, I would uh, like to hear a little bit more as to you know, how this transition team uh, will work through the nitty-gritty of the plumbing and the, the fire code and uh, uh, the special services and art uh, and, and how we're going to decide whether or not it's adequate, whether it meets what we think we're, we approve tonight. Who would like to address that? Well, I certainly, you know, hear your concerns. Um, obviously, I have to say that one of the things that board decisions do is trigger a process. Um, we would find it as a staff enormously helpful for the board to send us down a road, I mean, sort of like the Frost poem, you know, the road not taken. Um, we could spend, and we have already spent, a good deal of time trying to examine both of those paths. 
um, but at this point, I, if, if you're going with the kindergarten, I need to get the architect back, and they're not coming um, as, you know, I do, we certainly think it would be an imposition on the architect to uh, suggest that he should be coming in drawing plans just as a, a free gesture. That is going to be one of our costs, to have somebody come in and uh, continue to do the research. But we've already done enough so that I'm satisfied we do have, for instance, we have water in that wing, we have plumbing, um, we've discussed this with Gary Spencer as far as our building maintenance person who's been in this building now for 20 years and has all the plans and assures us that there is water in the wing, exactly what that means when we get in there and what we find out, I obviously could not tell you at this point. Um, I was very concerned about the fire marshal, the exit, because I do know that on grade exiting is, is a requirement for kindergarten. Uh, so I asked the architect to not only go to the state fire marshal, but we've also involved our local zoning, or not the zoning, but our local code enforcement officer. So those, those pieces which can stop you in your tracks, we have already investigated. Um, so I think that what, we, what I would recommend at this point is that the board does make a decision with the obvious caveat that if we run across some absolute roadblock, we've run across an absolute roadblock. I don't know at this point what it would be because I don't really want to have two transition teams. And I believe we are at the point where a decision needs to be made and we need to put people together to find solutions to um, reach that. Well, I would be asking the kindergarten teachers to come up with a representative or two. We can discuss the exact numbers. Um, obviously, the building administration. Um, I would uh, want to include a member of the board, whichever one of you would like to be involved in that. Um, I certainly expect to be part of that. Um, I think it would be nice, uh, and I don't have a process to suggest at the moment, but as board members, we can think about this and, and get back to a process to invite parent, a parent or parents to be part of this group. I think we need high school representation. Um, that's certainly what, what I've been thinking about. There may be uh, other elements there, but we don't want a group that's so large we can't get everybody together. But we do want a group that's large enough to make sure that we've covered the various concerns that are going to come up. Well, I do too, but I'm... One or two, maybe one who has a child in, in, a, mm -hmm. in one of those grades now, K or one, a low grade, and then someone who has a child coming in. I think that's important. important to me too, but I also think that, uh, frankly, we need a process, and I'm going to turn to the board to help uh, do that. I mean, it's, um, I would want to avoid looking like we were, you know, um, we need to come up with a way by which we solicit people who would be interested and then who has the time and what have you and then, I don't know, pull a number out of a hat or something, but um, some way that is that is clear and fair. Mm -hmm. Certainly for parental input, you could ask the Pondco Parents Association. Ah, yeah, that would be, maybe that is a process, the only process we would need to do, let them determine how they want to do it. Um, okay. Yes, yes, of course, there is some, there would be some shared uh, facilities, certainly on the playground and so on. One of the nice things about being chair is by the time it's my turn to speak, everything's been said, <laughs> and said very well, I might add, too. So I think we're probably ready to take a vote, and uh, in the motion, uh, we're in workshop, so I think we're going to have to go through the, I mean, I've got to write down. The special school board meeting of January 21st is now called to order, and uh, whatever time it is, 9.25. Um, and for our first order of business, um, I'd like to hear a motion for uh, moving the kindergarten to the high school and also putting into place a team to uh, help facilitate the move. Do I hear a motion? Okay. Second? Further discussion? No, I would, uh... I guess
guess in the motion, I would like to see something about the transition team, uh, how often it's going to report back to the board, uh, perhaps include in the motion uh, parts of the discussion we just had as to the possible people who would serve, uh, just so the board is kept regularly uh, apprised of uh, the problems that are encountered, if any. Uh, it could be either. I prefer just to keep the motion simple and, and give direction to the superintendent after that. That's a, okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Um, so as part of the further direction then, um, I saw, you've been keeping a list, Nancy, is that right? Of I saw you writing a list, have you been keeping, yeah, okay. Uh, Nancy has the list of everybody that's been mentioned. If somebody comes up with other ideas or somebody we've forgotten, please be sure and let us know. Rosemary? Um, I think he has <clears throat> Okay. Oh, Connie mentioned high school representation. Yeah, but I I think she missed. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, as far as reporting back to the board, um, I would hope for a report at each meeting. Yeah. Now we have a second vote to take, and that is um, following the B1 options, or the B options, or the C options for future consideration. Um, we haven't really discussed the options tonight. Well, uh, no, yeah, I, I my, my dilemma is that if we are going to go to the state for a report, it has to go through a process and has to be completed by April 15th. The first piece of that is a vote from the board to get into that process. We also normally have to go to the town council, and I can't expect them to have a special meeting. Um, so my concern would be to, to do a, do something so that I can go to the town council by March, their March meeting. I don't know, you know, they might have some kind of special meeting around that I could hang on to, but I would not want to count on that. Um, the, uh, both of those, the both do not need to be a completed application, but you obviously have to be able to I mean, we're in favor of uh, backing, uh, putting in an application to the state along those general lines. And actually, at this point, what we're doing is establishing a need. We don't go to the state for a rating with a building plan. We go for a rating on the need. That is, I write up something and get, get some help from the architect and so on to uh, make a synopsis of what our renovation and dilapidation study is. And we we'll throw the whole thing in there, but we can we could uh, reference it. Um, we would also then uh, have to be somewhat specific about what we want to do about this. In other words, we're asking the state to help us uh, to the extent that they will uh, to renovate the code. And if you go with the B1 modified option, that's the one that goes with the partial new construction and so forth. Um, either way, all the rest of them really are uh, either B or C. It's renovation of the and you should be thinking only of the middle school at this point because the pond code project is a separate project, which uh, I would anticipate putting in an application for in November. So we're strictly talking middle school right now. So does the motion need to be just the continuation of the process to go to town council, or do you actually want us to say the B strand or the C strand? Well, yeah, I mean, in other words, um, I think what it boils down to, to get it out of those, some of those choices, what I'm asking is consideration or authorization to 
go ahead and uh, prepare since we had the February meeting. Our problem is our March meeting is the day after the town council March meeting, and so he said it to get cumbersome, although we can always have, uh, we can have a workshop uh, on the 25th of February. We can uh, attend a special meeting for both at that point, again, just to try to help you work your way through this. But what I, what I, I think what you would need to do for me to get started on this is to authorize me to begin preparation for a state application for the middle school. Um, and if you can indicate to me which of the very, well, you, you basically have two choices. One is renovation of the extant building, and the other is partial new construction renovation of the extant building. They're, they're all pretty much the same, except for that one difference. This is in um, Madam Chairman, I move that we authorize the superintendent to proceed with the uh, major construction application to the state due by April 15, 1992, uh, which is for a partial uh, new construction and uh, renovate for code of the middle school. We have that right so I can get it. <coughs> options of B1 and B1 modified, which is essentially keeping the configuration of which we just voted, um, you're looking at a difference between two costs of about $1,600,000. So it would cost us about $1,600,000 to essentially reconfigure the middle school with essentially a new addition and eliminate some costly renovation of old structures. You need to. I think uh, some of those figures, however, do not factor in the 25% project costs. Um, and I think one of the things that you do get out of going to the state, going through the state rating process, uh, we refine some of those costs so we understand what we're doing. What you're getting into is a is a process that um, the best possible scenario would be that we'd be rated sometime. Uh, we change the timeline a little bit, but I think that we, we would get some kind of answer from the state by the fall, uh, certainly I would think before Christmas. And that would tell us where we stand in competitive nature vis-a-vis -vis other towns putting in similar projects. At that point, you might find that the state says why, that, that our needs are great enough that they will help us to this extent, that extent, and give us some idea of what they would, would do. And then you have a decision to make whether it's going to be a three, five, seven year wait if you want to bypass the state project and go strictly for local funding. So that going to the state for the application does not close your options. You can always back away from that, but you won't find out whether or not you would get any funding unless you go through that process. But it does mean you don't do anything else but plan. Okay, what I'm looking at is one of the spreadsheets that Peter gave us about a month ago. And in that one, he did factor in the 25% allowance. Yeah. So we're essentially looking, take, if you add 25%, okay, essentially it's going to cost with the Pond Cove about 2982000 That's without the 25%. That's just basic renovations and program addition, et cetera. Um, so you're essentially looking at probably around 6, 000, 6, million, a 6 million renovation project of the middle school versus an $8 million, less, a little less than $8 million. Uh, renovation project, so it's still about it's one million six hundred thousand. I think in a, looking at the long range, uh, are you renovating appropriate space? And and having been on that study committee, you really aren't. A lot of it is inappropriate space, and essentially all you're doing is bringing it up to code, but you really haven't created appropriate space for for the for the, for the age group that's there. You still haven't this really no way that you can reconfigure in renovation what is now a, um, to me, a mile-long corridor. And it's, to some degree, that's what you have at Pond Cove. I think what a million six hundred does, it, it <coughs> gives a facility which is better prepared for the future and the future needs of our, our student population. Okay. 
Well, frankly, that's why the administration reviewed that and came up with that suggestion, even though we too were looking at the most cost effective um, issues we could. Uh, it is certainly well worth considering. Peter, I'm wondering. Um, I've been reading that interest rates are probably going to hit their lowest fairly soon and then start back up again. The, the question that I still have about all this is I realize how important it is to find out what we might get from the state, but is there any way that we can figure out um, what we would get from the state? Would that equal or make up for what we might lose in a higher interest rate if we have to wait? That's an interesting question. Uh, I have a computer here, but I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, but it's a very interesting question, and probably in 20 minutes or so, I could run numbers on that. Over 20 years, if you uh, uh, were to have a 2 or 3% increase in the interest rate uh, by the time you actually borrowed the money, uh, you conceivably could have end up paying as much in additional interest uh, as you would have if you had just done the deal right now, borrowed the money, received no state, state aid. But uh, I'm not quite quick enough, and neither is this machine, to be able to give you an answer until tomorrow morning. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. But, but it's, a, it's a great question, and uh, it's actually one I hadn't, uh, hadn't thought to run, and I will run it. How long between the application on April 15th and a rejection or numerical value of where we stand? They just lengthened.